Welcome to Dr. Z PhD interviews. This is the place where I interview inspiring and interesting people. Today I have a very interesting, I should say, um, very special guest, Annalise Cherry, who is a founder and owner of Analyst Style. Annalise, welcome to the interview. Thank you so much for being part of it. Thank you. I'm so excited to be with you, Dr. Z. I love you your style. Me, thank you. You can call me Natalia, Dr. Natalia. Z, official fast girls. Um, thank you. I'm a big fan of your work. Um, I came through your work through a mutual person that we both know and she introduced me to your work. And I just, I love what you do. I want to get more in depth in discussion, what you do and how you help women and trans women for starters. Why didn't you share with viewers a little bit about yourself? I, a personal clothing stylist and have been for 20 years, um, I started my business when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter and wanted something that was uh, where I could choose my own schedule and started working with the, oh, I was living in San Francisco at the time. So I started working with the LGBTQ community from the get-go and um, just my business just grew in different directions. Um, I began working with trans masculine and non-binary. And then since I've moved down to LA, I've been fortunate having been introduced to Gina and the Trans Lounge to be more involved with working with uh, women that identify as trans. Mm. I didn't know that you, I have it on the list of my questions to ask if you work with trans masculine and non-binary people, but it's interesting, that's actually where your work started and then it's progressed yes. to working with trans feminine folks. Yes, yes. I think it's because um, within my group of friends that, you know, they had friends that were trans mask or, or non-binary, but I couldn't find my group of women, of trans women. I was, you know, living up in Sonoma and, at that time and um, San Francisco is far away. And I was, I was wanting to get in with, the LGBTQ center there and just it just wasn't happening so um right when I got down here then I was introduced and then I got into the center here and now I, I predominantly focus on women that identify as trans yeah yeah notice that on your website you describe yourself as a feminine image consultant it's very specific do you want to elaborate a little bit more what does it mean feminine image consultant. I noticed that you use the word feminine and not yeah. very, not woman's image consultant, but feminine. So share a little bit more about that. What do you mean by that? Um, it's kind of funny. So, so based on what I just said, initially, I always want to work and help everybody. Right. But within that, like when we were first concepting the website, it was called styling for humans and you know the umbrella and having everybody um, represented but then when we went to start marketing the seo like there would be no way for anybody to find us yeah. so we had to laser focus in and just say okay we need to put male to feminine male to female and um you know have all the the trans fam things that will lock women in people in to what we're doing. So um, through my marketing gal, my queen, <laughs> Macy Jane, and my other team, my, my whole team is, is trans women. So um, we kind of just got laser focused on our audience. And then, you know, I would ask, I would ask them specifically, like, what do you crave? Mm -hmm. what, what's important to you? And that's how the content was built. So I guess to answer your question, it's, um, you know, it's teaching just the subtleties of femininity, just, you know, whether it's the, the, the physical appearance, just, you know, oh, here's a great haircut for you. And this looks good on your face. You know, this particular um, color palette looks great on you. Um, asking how, how, what do you want to emphasize or de-emphasize in your, mm -hmm. on your picture? Okay, so you want to de-emphasize your shoulders. Here are some ideas. Um, and then depending on the, you know, where they want to go, they might say, well, you know, I really, I want to be able to walk in heels. 
I want to be able to like, how do I gesture? How do I sit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, And just little things like that. And it's interesting because that's all the outward kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But we, I'm really interested in the nuances. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in, um, you know, like really listening. I do really, really deep listening and, and trying to extract like, what are you, what do you really, really want? Yeah. What is your heart's desire? Because here you are, it's taking you this long to get here. You know, how can I, get you where you want to go. And, and my line in there is fast because a lot of women that I work with are, they're transitioning later Mm -hmm. and they want to catch up, you know, they want to catch up. They want to look beautiful. They want to have this information of how do I build my wardrobe? What's going to look good on me? Yeah. Um, How do I shop? You know? So, so it sounds as if this is not just about closing. It's not just about color combinations and it's not just about hair and makeup it's an overall feminine image whatever that is to that individual person it's an overall kind of an energetic presence that they tend to carry so that's so it seems like you're doing much more than just style women it's you know what it's magic what the the two of us are creating it's like i'm like an alchemist i i listen Mm -hmm. and I take the information in and I spin it and then I'll you know move it towards them like is this what you mean Mm -hmm. oh okay so that's almost it okay then we'll keep working on it and so that so it's like a natural organic kind of um dance that we're doing and in that moment we're elevating her so that she feels safe seen and heard you know um, that like, she believes that she's going to have her vision, Mm -hmm. you know, come to life and that there is hope, you know, even if you transition later and you're feeling awkward and you don't know how to do it, it's like, we're going to find your way to express yourself authentically in your feminine way. However you want that to come through. You think that's something everybody can learn? You think that's that's a learned progression that people can achieve? Only if they want to, right? If it, it depends on how hungry they are for that, how mm-hmm. much it matters to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but sure, I do believe that yes, it is. I mean, if some, if a woman came to me and she was like, I, I need the whole, I, you know, concept help me with the concept because sometimes I'll be working with women and then they'll blow their nose not like a woman like very very masculine Mm -hmm. you know or they'll make very masculine noises that they used to make that they probably don't want to make but they don't know that they're making right and so it's like just those little things like (laughs) that we take for granted yeah so how do that's that's a great segue to um let's get elephant out of the room so you are cis woman right you identify cis yeah um getting we're talking about particular space that you work with and i would imagine you probably have gotten or still getting perhaps even some resistance maybe some pushback from the communities that you know you're cis woman um what kind of pushback have you noticed and what is your response to that pushback I have to tell you that I was, I was so surprised when I got pushed back because my, my heart is so pure and I, I'm, I'm, I'm such a, um, you know, I want to help. So I, I had to really like, okay, take that information in and then think about like, where is that coming from? Oh, okay. So they've had a bad experience yeah, and they didn't feel safe. And so I had to just not take it personally and then just really kind of prove myself, just be like, you know, this is who I am all day long, you know, and you can talk to my clients and see, you know, if, if they feel seen. Um, it initially happened when I was uh, trying to get into, you know, what I'm actually with, with a therapist. Um, and we were talking, we were having lunch and she said, well, 
you know, you're, you're cis. Why do you think they're going to want to work with you? And it was the way she said it. I was like, well, we're all women. Yeah. And I'm a woman. She's a woman. I'm here to help. There is no differentiation for me. Mm-hmm. And I can see why there would be for them because of maybe, you know, a past hurt. Yeah. So um, I feel like being a cis woman is an advantage in, 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 in a way for, for expansion of, of um, awareness within the cis community and the trans community, you know, bringing the sisterhood together. Yeah. And um, I love that word sisterhood because sometimes yeah. we forget that uh, at the crux of femininity, is the sisterhood women are naturally prone to come together in groups yeah. to socialize this is why women are more body language aware they tend to yeah. touch more they tend to hug more they tend yeah. to be present for each other more we're very social beings so we like to commingle and we like yeah. to help and yeah. a lot of times we can help in a very you know it can be very hey you know you look like you need to lose five pounds and it may sound tough but it's tender loving care and it comes from a good place and that's what women tend to do it's not yeah judgment right so um i love how you got into the space and um i agree i think being a cis woman can also be an advantage mm-hmm. do you sometimes are you sometimes afraid or where me perhaps you were worried in the past mm-hmm. that um being a cis woman in the space of style you may inadvertently maybe perpetuate stereotypes of what a woman is uh Mm, no, because I don't put my cis gender orientation on anybody I, because I don't have one. I don't, I, I have masculine, feminine energy. Masculine. You're like your own woman, your own woman. There's only one you, the way you present yourself, yeah. you have your own femininity. So it's not about, this is the stereotype of what a woman should look like. Yeah. Let's find your inner and have it come out and help you really get in touch with that. Yes, I mean, I really, um, I, I guess I just, most the thing that's so important is I really make them feel heard and safe. And I listen really, really deeply. So I'm listening, they're giving me information and then they might say, um, you know, this particular look, I really gravitate towards, I've tried to accomplish it myself, and I failed. And I don't know why I can't wear this. And so um, then, you know, uh, maybe I'll say, send me, send me a visual. And let's see how we can rework that. And, you know, make it specifically for their body type or for their age. Mm -hmm. So that I I really believe every woman at every age can create the looks that they want. 100%. You know, like rocker chick, um, like, uh, maiden in distress. Just, you know, (laughs) I I don't even know why maiden in distress came to mind. Yeah. Super powerful. Um, you know, feminine woman, uh, you know, like the, the boss bitch, you know, all of it, just Mm -hmm. empowering that, you know, showing the the ways that you can, because style for me is not one way. Style is about the, the marriage of many different energies. So masculine, feminine, feminine, it's like um, thrifting, you know, with very high-end, you know, purse, shoes, and making everything complicated and at different vibrations. It's just, mm. I don't, I don't work with just like, here's the feminine structure. Let me put this on you because that's, that's boring. And I don't want to put them in a box and it's boring for me. I, I don't do that. And then and style is about, I think of style as personality. At least I think, Absolutely. so when I go for chunky jewelry, I'm trying to communicate my sense of style with it, right? When I wear all black, I'm also trying to communicate my sense of style. So yeah. there's this marriage of personalities you you projecting the type of person you are and how the world yes. how you want the world to see you yes well it also like for example with your style it says i have i have confidence and that you know that you're doing self-love because you're adorning yourself and that you know that 
you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that if I every study, woman should self love. Period. Well, we need to. T- that's one thing I would love to talk about. But on, before we get there, it's also when when you express yourself like you are then it's like a conversation starter, right? So if I saw you out, I would walk up and I'd say, you look gorgeous. I love Mm -hmm. your style. And then you you would say, oh, thank you. Oh, I got this necklace, blah, blah, blah. You know, we'd have this whole exchange Mm -hmm. about about kind of acknowledgement. And actually I I would be grateful to you because you brightened my day you inspired me, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what style does or can do for people. But wait, what was I going to say? There was something I wanted to touch upon. Oh, is self-love to, to adorn ourselves as women Yes, is self-love to, to, to do our hair and our makeup and, Mm -hmm. you know, wear soft, you know, silky robes and, have like I have a candle on my desk I've got flowers I've got my diffuser going that's all for me that's for my self-love and so that's one of the things I teach my clients is especially if they're if they're just starting their transition and they're feeling frustrated Mm -hmm. what are the what are the things that you can do for Mm -hmm. you right now Mm -hmm. you can go take a beautiful bath with candles and flowers And you can put on a lovely robe, you know, just, Mm -hmm. and I can just send you some links and in the, in the comfort of your beautiful robe, you can do some shopping and, you know, just go slow and feel good about yourself. I love that. I think self-love is, it's crucial. And um, it takes, it it takes a while to learn how to, to do self-love for any person. And it took me a while together to, to value myself and to be able to adorn myself. So I think it's a work in progress for everybody. Now um, for you in working with trans femme individuals, how often do you see that passability? I often talk about passability on my channel. Uh, some people hate the word passability because they feel like it reinforces stereotypes. The reality by far and large is that there's a lot of trans people who identify as trans, what I call trans binary, meaning they want to go from gender assigned at birth that they're not comfortable with at all to yeah. an opposite end of a spectrum. And to a lot of them, at least in clients you're working with, that would be women. Yeah. So it's a very trans binary type of, um, you know, presentation on a spectrum. And for them, I have learned passability is very important. I, I seldom see trans binary women who don't give a shit about passability because right. in the end, everybody wants to be validated and seen for their congruencies, how they see themselves on the inside. Exactly. Do you see that also too, that passability is very important to trans women you work with? I do. I do. Um, Again, I like I said, I, I work with women who are transitioning later. So sometimes they may not have the the time or the luxury of, of time to have been able to do everything they want to do to get there. But as 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 much as we can get them there, then yes, when I work with women who are a little bit younger, then it, it is it's so much easier. Um Mm-hmm. The hormones, right? Mm-hmm. They've just been able to have more hormone replacement. Um, but I think, you know, passability has to do with the very, very subtle nuances, mm-hmm. the nuances and the, the confidence, like really like knowing like from head to toe, okay, I got this, you know, and having validation from their friends yeah family loved ones you know that they look amazing and yeah it can be i mean i definitely teach it i i I don't want to um ever promote that you must do that but of course i'll make if you want to go there we'll go there right right because it's very i agree there's a lot of people who don't give a shit about possibility and you know that's great i always say that's great that's awesome that you really don't care that's that's you know, just one last thing you need to climb. Right. Um, and for some people, it's a big deal. And if it's a big deal to yeah. them, I agree. With um, for those women for whom passability is really important, right? Yeah. What 
what do you think? And I'd be curious to know this because I, I have like my top, I have like a three little nuggets that in my opinion have to somewhat come together uh, for people to be gendered properly because we live in society where our brain just automatically lets us on to particular little cues and creates a mental picture of a gender in our minds. Right. It's just how we work. Our brain works that way. What are for you as a stylist, what do you think you would say maybe three essences that should somewhat be collectively together present for a person to be able to be uh, to present as a woman? Well, because to me, that would be inward work in my initially would be inward. So it would be like, what is your relationship with your feminine divine? You know, what mm -hmm. it's because it's not out, it's in, and then it goes out. So really, I, I have these conversations, like, have you, do you touch into your feminine divine? Do you listen to your intuition? Do you realize, do you feel more heart-centered, mm -hmm. you know? all the things that are adjusting to the, the, the authentic part of who you are. And then, then those things come out in femininity, I feel like. And so then there's the natural movement of the body and mm -hmm. the natural just things that, you know, we just, we just do because, you know, we're in our bodies. And, and so then I guess, you know, depending on the person, it's, it's so hard to say, Natalia, because I, I, because if somebody, I don't know, can't go to that place because of their limitations on their appearance, then I don't want them to ever feel like they're not feminine or mm -hmm. they're not passing. I don't know how to answer that question, I guess, is what I'm saying, because, mm. you know, because it's, uh, mm. it's a tough one. Yeah. Well, it's tough because it really depends on where that person is. Like if I look at them and I'm like, how can I get you to where you want to go? And mm. then I'm going to be honest with you and say that, I don't know if I can get you exactly where you want to go, but this is where I feel that this might serve you and you might feel really great about yourself. Mm. So if, if somebody comes to you and they say, um, I, I'm in transition, I'm transitioning, and my biggest struggle is I want to be gendered female. When I go out there, I want to avoid misgendering as much as possible. Anything comes to mind that they can work on that like immediately socially, culturally tends to sadly misgender them? I think that 100% that, you know, their, their makeup needs to be subtle and that the color palette needs to be um, perfect for their skin tone and um, that they, you know, need to learn like day makeup and night makeup and that their hair or their hair piece, whatever they're using is, um, is styled for their face, their face shape and the, the right color, the right cut, everything. And then, um, you know, nails, just, you know, all the things that are, are feminine and then moving down to the clothes. So if you're, if you're creating a more feminine look to, and I have a list of um, style tips that I'll share later however we can do that but it's it's this great style tips of how to emphasize and de-emphasize shoulders how to create a waistline you know definitely tips and tricks to get you because basically it's just smoke and mirrors it's just yeah I it, love how you said it smoke and mirrors because it's smoke and mirrors for every woman out there every I woman. mean it's it's not it's seriously me in makeup me without makeup are two different women yes. me in a dress and me in my sweats are two different women yes. um, it's truly is a smoke and mirrors and I agree it's all about learning to accentuate body parts you want to accentuate and yeah. hide body parts you you want to hide and you know I, I 
happen to be big breasted. So I have to wear something that is lower cut because it'll yeah. make my front look smaller versus right. the minute I wear a turtleneck, I'm just like a one square shaped woman. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it's, I agree. I love how you said it's smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to be careful about that word because I don't want to give a message to trans women that you, you're not being yourself, you're fooling. Because in reality, we're all doing smoke and mirrors with ourselves. Well, it's, it's just kind of, we're, we're only creating illusions, right? Yeah. We're just creating it, it because we're human. Our eye, it looks, it looks for order and it looks for balance. Right. So when, when our, and sometimes we don't even know why something is right or something is wrong. But for example, you brought up being a, a large breasted women. When I try to have my clients, when I say, you must show some decolletage to create length. Mm-hmm. Not, you don't have to show off your cleavage, but you have to have this. If right. you wear a turtleneck or you wear a scoop neck, all I'm going to see is your breasts. And it's so hard. Like, how do you describe that? You can't until you actually put somebody in that neckline. And then they're like, oh my God, I even look taller. It's like, yes, you do. I feel sexier and I look sexier. Yeah, I look sexier. I mean, the clothes look better. It's just, um, it's, you know, like, for example, with a lot of my women that identify as trans, they want to de-emphasize their shoulders. So I suggest, you know, not a spaghetti strap because when you wear a spaghetti strap then there's more skin that's showing, Mm -hmm. making your shoulder look bigger. Go for a wide strapped, tank top and then all of a sudden it goes like that instead of like that that is a great idea you know just simple simple things and you know with makeup makeup as we know it's transformative so but the right makeup it has to be the right makeup so I feel like if 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 what they're looking for is possibility then you don't want anything to stick out you want everything to just be very blended and subtle and feminine and beautiful and nothing that's like, you know, that skirt's too short, you know, mm-hmm. the heels are too high. Yeah. yeah. Just, I, it's subtle. It's very yeah. subtle. I, I agree because I think that um, any, any loud style will make you stand out. You know, like I said, me with red lipstick and accessories will make me stand out in a grocery store. The next day, me with no makeup and sweats will not make me stand out. So it's all about, you know, sometimes I want to be noticed and sometimes I want to be loud and sometimes I want to just not be noticed and I want to mind my business. So it's all about, it's it's almost like fluctuating the degree of of, uh, noise and um, rhythms that you put out out there for people to read. It's like playing an instrument, really, that you're talking about. Exactly. Well, me personally, I wake up and I'm like, who who am I today? Like, I literally have to think of, am I feminine? Mm-hmm. How feminine do I want to be? Am I going to be sporty? Am I going to be more masculine? Am I going to do David Bowie? You know, I kind of like, I kind of like think about characters that I want to create. And so it it is, I mean, it's, it's now an exciting opportunity for them to express themselves in many different ways. And so it's about finding their, like you said, like their hum, where yeah. you want, right? Yeah. Where's the place that you want to, like, that's your, okay, so that's your grand place. And then you can go up, you know, try oh, some red lipstick here, you know, some sexy heels here, but not all together, you know, just do it very tastefully, yeah. elegantly. Tasteful is the right word. Um, why do you think sometimes, and we talked about it earlier, mm-hmm. uh, why do you think sometimes there's a struggle for people with taste level or um, not so much maybe taste level, but um, dressing or, or wearing clothing that mimic a teenager, teenager type of uh, presentation? Right. Um, I think honestly that they just don't know that there's a, and maybe an outdated version of femininity, woman, girl vision in their mind. And 
you know, to take elements of that, maybe may honor her. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, but take her to a place now where at the age that you are, you keep that playfulness, but you take it to a more mature level. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, be that, that little girl, teenager at home, enjoy her. But if you want to be, um, you know, sophisticated and you want to have a more fluid experience, I, I, I mean, whether you're cis or trans, if you are bringing on too much sexy, a lot of times you're going to get maybe, you know, the wrong kind of response. Unless you want that response. Again, if everybody watching, if, exactly. if that's their style, if that's their, their you know, their yeah. way of expressing themselves, then, you know, kudos to you, you know, yeah. totally. Absolutely. Um, we're just talking about sometimes I tend to see it. Um, sometimes I see it's almost like, um, you know, people tend to actualize themselves in puberty because puberty is when the hormones are fire up, when we yeah. think all the secondary sex characteristics we don't want. And like we talked earlier, there's a desire to catch up, to catch yeah. up to those years that you lost. You know, there's a lot of feeling of loss and feeling that yeah. I want to go back. I want to, you know, like you said, want to have that prom or I want to, you know, be able to wear that, you know, something very overtly pink or whatnot, something that my, yes. you know, my schoolmates used to wear. And there's yeah. a desire for that catching up, which is natural and healthy desire. And yeah. so just helping people how to also... Uh, measure up with their desires right now so for those women for whom desire is to yeah. pass and to look like graceful mature women they just might go out of flow with that style they you know and like we said i mean do do you right always but maybe there's like parts like do the pink dress but with you know i don't know Maybe we'll, I'll, I'll step back. Rock, rocker, rocker boots. Yeah, rocker boots. Or, you know, do the fishnets, but with maybe like a pencil skirt versus, you know, a, a short skirt. You know, like bring in all the sexiness, but at the level or the age group or, you know, just mm -hmm. there's so many ways to be sexy without like the whole shebang going on. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, you brought up earlier, you know, a lot of women, you notice, want to de-emphasize the shoulders, right? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because that's the body part I also see a lot of my individual clients tend to bring up. And what's interesting is that I have a lot of clients who have great shoulders, have amazing, beautiful arms. And from my vantage point, it looks incredibly feminine and it does not look at all bulky or masculine or whatever perception in their mind. Mm -hmm. How often do you see your clients and maybe this other body part, maybe it's not their shoulders, maybe their breasts or maybe their waistline uh, or maybe it's their hair where they really think it way worse and they have this projection of how bad it is in their hats when for your vantage point, it's really feminine and it's really beautiful. Yes, that's a very, um, so interesting, isn't it? Um, what we see in our hats and what really the world is seeing when we're yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, because, so I'm with that person, right? And I already, I already love who they are because I'm seeing them. And then I see that they don't see themselves. And so I purposely try to like, you know, well, let's accentuate like, well, I ask, what do you think is the, your best feature? And then usually they don't have their, you know, that they're, that spun off. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not true because our, what we do to ourselves. And then, so I'll say, well, actually, I feel like you, you have amazing legs, you know, let's really highlight your gorgeous legs. And these are the types of shoes that would look great on you. This is the type of hosiery that would look great on you you know, and, and I just kind of focus on something super positive. And then I say, this is a great, it's actually a lot of trans, they want hips, you know, they want a hip line and they want their waists smaller. 
So we work with um, like chain belts to kind of just subtly bring the mm -hmm. weight. Mm -hmm. and just to give like a little detail without like a major yeah. cinch. And draw attention. And draw, yeah. draw attention so that it's not just like, not just to put on a dress that's shapeless, but to also, you know, just add little feminine details and to wear, like this is, for example, I'm going to say the word peplum. You and I are going to know what that means, but I have, I'm in the process of writing. I actually don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid you not. I don't, what, what the hell is peplum? A peplum? I mean, it sounds like some kind of food. Ah, I'll show you. It's a... Uh... I, I have no idea what the hell the peplum. I'm... A peplum? I don't even know if you can see it. It literally just sort of... Oh, okay, got it. So it's it's a bottom... Got it, got it. It's like a mermaid. It's a... a mini, it's a mini mermaid skirt on a blazer. Yeah, so it basically, it flares out. It flares out. The waist <laughs> The waistline comes in the 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 um out part flares out so it gets this beautiful curve and so a lot of women i work with love it they're like can you find me some more peplum jackets a peplum dress peplum blouses yeah. i will never wear peplum that is so not my style <laughs> <laughs> I, I will feel very too, too yeah it's it's yeah no i'll pass yeah but i get it it's very it accentuates those body parts yeah i can see how it contours mm -hmm. to those body parts as well yes yes mm -hmm. and then you know what accessories i mean accessories are, are so important and i know a lot of women have a hard time with bracelets because of their wrist size so then i'd look for you know bracelets that stretch and um you know make sure that their their earrings are you know just the whole thing just the whole package and and really an understanding of why not just because i say so because right because you're teaching it. them you're teaching them something that they can later take on and build up on um you know it's, it's like one-on-one -on -one lessons that i tend to give sometimes to clients is that you know if you're going to show a little bit of cleavage cover up the bottom part if you're going to show your legs yeah cover up the cleavage, like have a create a balance with your body. Exactly. Um, un unless you, you want to be all out, then girl, go for it, you know. Right. Uh, but some people just, you know, depending especially where you go. So you're giving them this lessons that yeah. they can later take on and later they can build up and build on for um, for your clients. Um, so we talked earlier about you being my mindful not to push the stereotype of a woman. But how often do you get clients come in where they are stereotyping themselves? next to an image of a stereotype of a woman, right? I got to have the waist and I got to have the hips. And I mean, sometimes the image of a woman they talk about is not even, it's not even the stereotype that I see. Um, I don't even see a stereotype when it comes to women uh, because I just so prone to see women of so many different shapes and sizes. Um, but how often do you see that where they hold themselves up to this high bar of, you know, this Marilyn Monroe, really, uh, yeah. accentuated Marilyn Monroe image. But I think that's for all women, really. Mm -hmm. I do. You I think do. we all hold ourselves to Marilyn Monroe image? Well, well right now it's a size two supermodel, but... You, you, what, whatever that is, our society has is damaged our uh, mm -hmm. reality of what it is to be a woman. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for social media for pointing things out like cellulite is normal um you know hair is normal like just for for me to hear that and see that on social media helps me so much to not pick myself apart mm -hmm. and so then I think about how helpful you know it is to, now that we're seeing women full-figured women as models and you know on mannequins and that that's helping me. Um, I feel that that is so psychologically horrible for every woman. My partner is gender fluid. So I watch them. She, sometimes she's, she, they, <laughs> him going down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. of femininity. Like, oh, I still need to do this and I need to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
because you want to only if you want to but there's there's no you know it, it's I'm, I'm watching her and it's like where are you getting this information mm -hmm. you know why do you think it has to be this way mm -hmm. and so it's fascinating that is a whole psychological yeah. landmine uh, I think and um I remember when I was very young I was very um uh affected by that, like how I was supposed to look. And it was very detrimental. I mean, it's actually, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's so toxic. It's so toxic. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I just, it's, it's a lot of detox that we'll have to, to do an unlearning. Um, yeah. Cause I don't want to, I just, when I see them do that, I'll try to, you know, like that's not attainable. That's mm -hmm. really, that's, that's not kind to yourself mm -hmm. to have that kind of a standard because, oh, and then by the way, when you're trying to do that, how much your feet are going to hurt, how much your body's going to hurt, yeah. how much money you'll have to put into that. Oh my God. Yeah. And for what? For I, what? I love how holistic you are, how you don't just look at external. Let's, let's, let's help you mimic the image that, you know, will make the world validate your gender. You're not trying to do that. And I love how you, you really help them alchemically work on within and finding that confidence, right? Yeah. Uh, because I agree. I, 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 I ditched high heels centuries ago. I was like, fuck oh. this. You know, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know what? My feet have never been happier. Yes. Uh, I could care less. Um, but I agree, you know, some of the things become a rabbit hole that we end up chasing and it just takes us deeper and further away from actually who we are uh, exactly. and who we're meant to be and how we're meant to look, you know, exactly. some of us are just not, you know, I, I will, let me tell you, I'll never be size two. I'll be miserable if I try to achieve size two. Yeah. Dr. Z YouTube channel will cease to exist if I become size two. <laughs> I won't have energy to create any content. So, you know, there's a level of acceptance of really who you are and who you're meant to yes. be and to make it shine. For speaking about confidence, I find confidence fascinating, especially in trans world. Yeah. I find it fascinating because I personally have seen a lot of trans women that have not mastered certain elements that we would otherwise think are essential for possibility. Voice is a prime example. Right. I've seen trans women that don't even care about working on their voice. And by perhaps social yeah. standards, by yeah. social standards, would be considered masculine voice. Yeah. Because of the confidence and yeah. overall how they carry themselves. Yes. There's no doubt. It's yeah. a fucking woman. There's yeah. no doubt, right? Yeah. So how, let's talk about confidence. Share a little bit more about what you thought on confidence. How can one get in touch with that confidence? Because it's so essential. But confidence equals authenticity, right? So that, that's all there is to it. If you go way in and you're like, this is who I am. This is how I'm always going to be. And basically, you know, fuck everybody. That's why, that's why we're drawn to those people because they are walking the warrior walk. Mm -hmm. They are basically just, they're so deeply in their own beingness that they shine so brightly yeah. that, you know, we're attracted to that as humans. It's like, you know, you see somebody owning who they are and you want that because mm -hmm. for, for all of us humans, it's hard to move towards your authentic self. People are going to make fun of you. You know, you might lose your job. I mean, it, however you present yourself, you know, it's, it's risky to be elevated in your full self. So when we see somebody do it, but somebody, especially who has been marginalized, yeah. it's like, wow, I hear you. It makes me so joyful. It's incredible. When I it? see it um, yeah. and I've seen it so often, it's like, uh, you're my prime example to everybody else who is 
being so hard on themselves yes. for not mastering this or that. I always say it's a combination of things and the rest is just really you owning who you are yes. and, you know, walking that walk. I, I totally agree. Um, speaking of confidence, I love, I want to, I want you to share a little bit those fancy, I've seen Macy oh. Jane weird. <laughs> yeah. There's also, and I don't know if this is like a sideline or whatnot, but there's a line of, I think you were drinking from the coffee mug yeah. and then there's a t-shirt behind you and, so, and it says, what does it say? It says, if it's not fancy, fuck off. How did that originate? Because I've seen Macy Jane where I was like, oh, and if people don't know Macy Jane, they got to go to your website and see her because she is, she's also part of your team. Right. And, um, she's like meant to wear the shirt period because her overall energy is that you know this is me and if you don't like it go ahead and fuck off and I just love that yeah so how did that come around what is that you know this particular message came from a group of my friends who are all artists and um basically it was this it was all about style so we would gather maybe at one of their houses and you know they're maybe like a sculptor but they also cook and they also make like you know this beautiful table like decorated like with you know random flowers from everywhere and it's just like it's just this i don't know bonanza bouquet of creativity and so my friend trixie she i took this and I spun it with her permission, of course. And I can't remember what the the original was, was something, you know, I don't know, even know what the original was, but the idea was like, if it's not fancy, fuck off. If you come to my house, it's going to be fancy. And everybody here, you know, like get dressed up and and inspire me because I just made this beautiful. So fancy does not have to equal expensive. We're not talking about expensive. Fancy, no, fancy is full on expression and authenticity. So um, to me, fancy is, you know, a beautiful flower arrangement. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's it's you. It's It's you doing your own innate self-expression. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, it's confidence. It's a declaration, like declaring and deciding who you are, stepping into that, shining in the world and, you know, like inspiring people. So when I put on my t-shirt, well, I'll show you, I, I have two, I have this one. I, you should have worn one today. Well, I was going to. To, to tell everybody, fuck off. You, you're so humble at, um, well, you're so humble about what you do and what you create. And I think those are great. So I want to put you to test with us. Hold on. So, yes. so you, uh, you know me very barely, uh, but your style is, so this should be natural to you, right? You should like, take a look at me, hear me speak, sum up some of my energy. Um, so <laughs> me, um, I want to wear one of these shirts, right? Really? So what else behind you would you add that you think would speak to my sense of style? And which one of those t-shirts would you pick for me? And well, how else would I dress it up with everything that you have yeah. behind you? Okay, so because you like black, I would put you in this. Yes, and 100%. This is, this, this basically for me was designed off of a Vivian Westwood label. So, It's, it means punk. It means Alexander McQueen, you know, it means it's. And I love Alexander McQueen and I love Vivian Westwood. Right. Right. Yes. And so that's the union Jack. And then this is the trans flag colors, not the trans flag, but the trans flag colors. So, um, okay. For you. Yes. I would take that t-shirt and, um, I would probably put it with, (laughs) <laughs> do you have something behind to show it i totally you know here's the thing though my oldest sister she works in fashion uh-huh. and um she she's like different colors different patterns um she has great sense of style and sometimes when i go shopping with her she will pick something for me i would never i'm like helen no i'm not fucking wearing flower print no 
but she's like, just do it, just do it. Just try it. Or, she, or she'll pick a color for me and she's like, just try it. Yeah. And I gotta say, I look very uncomfortable in it, but I look amazing. But I feel very uncomfortable because it's outside of my comfort zone, but I look great. But then, right, you took a baby step. Yeah. And so maybe you'll like, okay, that's too much, but let me try this, mm-hmm. right? And then you'll it'll open your mind, expand. So the next time that you're out, you know, you'll buy a little something, then you'll send her a picture and she'll be like, ha I told you so, right? Yes, kind and, of. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of like- It does, it, it puts you, it broadens up. Yes. It's, it's like broadens up your perspective. Suddenly you, you realize, oh, this could work for me. Right. And right. it can look good on me as well. Well, if you, so you told me that you're big breasted and now how tall are you? 5'11". Oh my goodness. Oh, you're so lucky. I'm, fi- I'm tall and I'm curvy. So I'm 5'11". I'm about 200 pounds and very proportional. So body wise, very proportionate. Hips, so, everything. Yeah. So you can wear very long cuts of like, do you wear long jackets? Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that. So I would put you in, I have a leopard print trench coat. I'd put you in the trench coat. with that. Oh my God. Animal print is totally, totally me, totally Dr. C. Oh my goodness. Yes. So these two. Oh yes. And what would you pair for the bottom? Well, girl, I would put you in some leather pants. (gasps) Oh, And we're keeping flats. I'm not doing hills. No, you do rocker boots. Oh my right? God. Right? You I look love. so good in that. And I keep the red lipstick for that, keep of the course. Red and all of your, all of your accessories. Even accessories for that. Yeah. Well, I would do, you know, like anything we were talking earlier, anything that's a little bit more like, of course, maybe not the turquoise necklace but your ring and any more like spiky things that you have yeah. more like uh alexander mcqueen you know just just edgier any any of that and i love um you know i love it when people take my shirts and they cut them and they you know take rip off the sleeves and yeah. cut on the neckline and just do their love- thing with it yeah i love how quick you are I love how you just get, it's actually totally what I would wear. There's certain styles in my head. And I think a lot of trans women have the two. I think any woman has that. That We have all these different styles. Like there's a part of me that is very um, like goss, you know, adorned yeah. like the silver goss jewelry. And um, so I have like all these girls inside of my head. And sometimes yeah. I really want to be that girl and I just don't yeah. trust myself that I can pull it off. Um, but we'll have it. And so you seems tend to reach in and help people bring out all these different sides of them. Yeah, I can, it's like I can see. It's funny. Yeah. It's like I can see. I'm like, oh, you know what? She'll probably go there. And if that's too much for her, then we'll take a baby step here. And then we'll incrementally get there eventually because I don't want to ever push somebody, but I want to give them a, like a, a gentle nudge and confidence. Like, girl, I would never put you in that unless I thought you could totally carry it off. And 100%, you know, like take that home, try it around your friends and your family. And I bet you're going to get positive feedback and then wear it out. You know, it's, it's a lot of trust, right? So yes. people also have to trust you because Oh my God. There's things, sometimes you got to tell people, no, you, no, that you can't, it doesn't look good on you. I'm sorry. You have to be like, really? You have to, obviously you do it with, with love and care. You, in the yeah. end, you, it's, I, it's your mission to make people feel yeah. good and look good. But I, I educate them as to why. It's not like, you know, oh, don't do that. It's like, when you, when you wear this, this is what happens. Can you, do you see that? Like, well, look in the mirror. Do you see that? And then it will be like, they might say, uh, well, yeah, I see it, but I don't care. And I'll be like, okay, but at least they know so that if they, if it comes into their sphere later and they're like, yeah, actually, I don't like that. And I don't know how to go back. Yeah, I've given them the information and then they can make their choice. Yeah. For do sure. you have a list of, since you're so focused on uh, primarily styling clothing, right? Do you have also a list of, 
uh, people that you can refer people out to for the hair and maybe learning makeup. Yes, yes, we do. We have a really good, Macy Jane and I have put together a really good resource uh, for hair and makeup. Um, we're working on getting, um, you know, like shoe lines and um, gosh. I love that you're working with Macy Jane. I love her. She has such I great energy. Love She's her. so great. Yeah. She is, yeah. She's amazing and all of her friends are amazing. And I feel like when, when you meet somebody and then you meet their friends, then you know, like that says everything about who they are, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. yeah, she's, she's wonderful. We, we're, we're just a really great team and we've got Paige and, you know, just these strong, amazing, hardworking trans women and we love each other and it's just mm -hmm. we're so excited finally that we're going to be able to you know do fun things because obviously with covid we'd be doing like you know swap parties we'd be doing cocktail parties we'd be doing all these fun things that will come down soon down the line but yeah i mean there's a lot of fun things we want to do do you so you're you're based in Los Angeles, but yeah. do you offer your services to people who are like in Midwest, women who are in Pacific oh, yeah. Northwest? So you do work virtually. So this is something that can totally be done remotely. Anywhere. And, and funny, it's funny because um back before Zoom, I was doing Skype because I have clients, you know, throughout yeah. the United States. So it was like a natural thing when we went to Zoom and, and, and people were like, well, how do we even do this? It's like, you will not believe how much we can get done with, you know, the Zoom camera set up. And I'm going to see your wardrobe. We're going to see what works, what doesn't work. We're going to actually go, you know, take the things like no, that's a no pile. That's a donate pile. And then, um, you know, I'll be sending you links so that you can shop. So one thing I wanted to, to bring up is that um, shopping effectively, like yeah. why, why it's good to hire a stylist is um, I feel like what happens a lot with my clients is that they're so frustrated from shopping. First of all, it might be very terrifying for them to go out, right? And then when they do, they get things that they don't like, then they don't want to return them yeah. or they'll, they'll shop online and it, it just keeps missing. So the thing about working with me is I'm like, okay, this is your body type. This is what, you know, here, and I have a measurement guide too. So I can send them the measurement guide. They can, they'll have to have somebody else help them take the measurements. But when they order online now, then it's like, oh, okay, my inseam or my sleeve length is this, so that there's no guess, it, like that's taken out, you know, it's like, if you're tall, you're going to make sure that your inseam is going to be, you know, 34 inches long, and so that part of it, and just teaching them that you don't have to spend money, I mean, I thrift, I have really beautiful Me wardrobe, too. yes, right, that I have, and I used to a long time ago pay retail. I never pay retail. I'm like at the consignment stores. I'm online on ThreadUp or, you know. That's Poshmark. another thing I was going to ask. It just doesn't, working with stylists doesn't mean that you're suddenly going to be going to Chanel boutique and uh, even Rashford boutique. And um, it doesn't have to be, it can be whatever your financial budget is for the clothing, right? Yes. Well, that's the thing. It's like you... <laughs> you can literally build if someone if someone said to me i only have like just very struggling person you know i only have 500 dollars. like i could get them at least by thrifting you know like a capsule a little capsule wardrobe that you can miss and match yeah that you mix and match that you take you know for work and to evening with just like you know a great black skirt a great black jacket you know, a printed blouse, you know, just something like that. So it really is so <laughs> attainable. It's not, I think, I know, I think TV has really um, skewed people's experiences with working with a stylist. Yeah, I, I think the idea when we think about stylists, we think about, oh, it's going to be 
um, crazy mm -hmm. or, or they will be pushing us to purchase from the designers they work with. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all this idea and um, I agree. I don't think it has to be. I think, I think any professional would be smart enough to adopt to the person's situations and their, you know, where's the, and there's some people who, you know, they have the resources, they have the money and they do want to go boutique shopping and that's yeah. fine too. Um, and there's some people who don't care for that. It doesn't, you know, always have this example of things don't even have to be authentic, you know? Um, yeah. Was it like Coco Chanel that wore fake pearls until she got the real purse gifted to her? So it's like one of those things, you know, you can miss and match and things don't always even have to be, you know, like, I don't even think this is real turquoise. I think it's like, colored cowhide or something but who gives a shit it's all about how you pull it off it, you know you, you wear it like you it. own it yeah and to you it symbolizes something else so it doesn't I agree it doesn't have to be expensive it doesn't the only thing I will say that you must spend money on is your shoes that's it but you can find that I, I buy mine a lot of previously owned but I buy like a really good brand why shoes because oh my gosh cheap shoes there's nothing worse than cheap shoes they just mm. you know, inferior you just ruin you just that's well, it they're just so uncomfortable so you know cheap leather versus expensive leather so that you know it's going to mold to your foot you're gonna you're gonna for me shoes and a handbag is buy once buy well you know don't just buy crappy this or that buy that very nice pair of shoes of course, you know, it's consignment. Better to have one good handbag than yeah. five inexpensive. Exactly. That's going to ruin your, because you can take, I agree, accessories. And I think shoes fall in the category of accessories. Mm -hmm. There's certain accessories that you can have. And then you can put a simple black dress from Old Navy. Exactly. From, from anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. you take that handbag. Yeah. And suddenly it is transformed into something more chic and expensive. Exactly. With a little tiny belt and plus in your mind as well, it's like you're, you're outputting how you think it looks. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, I feel fabulous. And the people are like, is that a Chanel? And you're like, no, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm manifesting exactly. right now. Yeah. But so yes, it doesn't absolutely 100% does not have to be, mm -hmm. you can build a, a, an excellent wardrobe on hardly anything and that's the thing i teach my clients what's your brand okay know your brand then go to thread up or poshmark pop your brand in put your size in then it all comes down you check those out and then you know buy them in return you know make sure that you can return but you know i i help them build their wardrobe from from the beginning and then also okay here's your you know master wardrobe let's work on your you know mm -hmm. wardrobe let's work on your fall wardrobe so you just kind of bring things in so it just becomes a fuller expression of them with like the little bits like oh here's a rocker chick you know yeah here's, here's coco chanel here's david bowie you know so that it's like you know how delightful would that be for a woman who's identifying as trans to be like sink down into her look mm -hmm realize like oh my gosh I can do this and I can do that and I'm like yeah girl you can do everything and own it you said that uh one of the benefits you mentioned working with a stylist is you know teaching people how to do all of the things what are some, some other benefits like for people who are watching and um like I personally I'm going to be honest I have never worked with a stylist uh, but I always wondered I actually kind of wanted to as well to work with stylists because like I said there's I had that experience with my sister even though she's not a stylist where she's seeing me in a way that I can be seen and look great but I am incapable of seeing myself yeah. and I think that's one of the biggest benefits working with stylists is that stylist is able to see you right. uh, in this different way and help you how to reach that look as well what are some other benefits you would say working with a stylist um well because exactly like you were saying, we only see ourselves in a very one dimensional. Mm -hmm. So I see you and I see you in three dimensional. I see how you move. I see how clothes look on your body. You know, I, I might see like, 
oh, she really likes that turquoise color. Maybe she'll go here. So it's like, it's like a dance, right? So there's that. There's, um, it's basically knowledge. You're getting knowledge from me. You're, you're getting the fact, like, how do I shop effectively on a, on a budget? How do, even if I have an amazing budget, how do I shop effectively mm. so I get what I want without breaking the bank? Like, you know, somebody might want to have all designer handbags. So, and, and so I'll be like, okay, here's your designer handbags. What's your budget? Da, da, da. Okay. Well, let's like, you know, trim it here with like your basics so that you can spend your money on that. Also um, giving people information about de-emphasizing body parts. Yeah. You no. Know? If you like, for example, if, you know, if you were five, two and you had big breasts, I would say, Natalia, maybe like wearing skinny jeans will not serve you as for height. If you wore like a very um, wide leg, you know, black pant with a high heel. So mm -hmm. they can gain four inches, you know? So it's just like, it's like little tips and tricks. I feel, and then also, you know, we take pictures. So, so there's a visual, um, you know, like for example, say they're remote. So then I'll say, well, let's just do groupings of, you know, these pieces to make outfits and then let's take a picture so that they have a visual reference. Oh, this goes with that and that goes with that, you know, down to the shoes and the handbags yeah. and the accessories. So there's, there's ways that it, my whole intention is to A, make somebody feel beautiful, confident, to make their shopping, going into their closet, joyful. You walk in, you're like, oh my gosh, everything looks great on me in here. There's no baggage, meaning like mm -hmm. there's not the pieces over here that I used to wear. Or, or pieces over me. here that I'll wear when I lose 10 pounds. Well, that's it. See, Sometimes it ends like, up in my closet. Yeah, well, it's like, if that doesn't make you feel good, then those get pushed back. And then the sizes that fit you right now are, are what greet you. Yeah. So that it's always a positive experience because we're already hard enough on ourselves. So true. Right? So why walk into your closet and you look at that dress and you're like, oh, I wish I could wear that, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And after I gain 20, lose 20 pounds or whatever. It's like that dress needs to go bye-bye until, you know, later. Yeah. It just have, you know, positive affirmations greet you. I totally get it. I love it. I love how you said it, creating also this positivity in your closet. So then the positivity can shine inwards and shine outwards. I love it. I, I love what you do. I'm so excited that yeah. we had an opportunity to say, I think um, this is very helpful. Um, I learned a lot. I think this is also very helpful to a lot of women. And I think it's it's really great to have you in the space in working with trans women because yeah. in the end of the day, it for you at what's your gift, what's your passion, it's style. And you're helping people with style and how to have their personality, their sense of self, the authentic sense of self to come through that style. And yeah. I think that really doesn't really matter about gender at all. You know, no. we had to talk about gender because, you yeah. know, um, we're dealing with gender all, all the time, but in the end of the day, it doesn't really have to. So I'm so grateful for you to come and to talk. And I'm going to, I'm going to mimic that style because I do have a leopard coat. <gasps> Do it. I do have a leopard coat yes. and I do have leather leggings. Perfect. So I'm going to get the t-shirt and yes. I'm going to have to, I'm going to Instagram it and I'm going to make it all come together. And then everybody who watched and listened to it, be on the lookout because we're going to, we're, we're going to see the, You're style, gonna rock that the, look. Style, the style come to life. Yes. Yes. Of... You're going to rock that look. Well, okay. Well, since I have you, do you want the t-shirt or do you want the tank top? No, no, I'll get the t-shirt. I, I want to support you. I, I want no, to support but I have, you. I have like the black t-shirt and I have a black tank top. Well, I'll get the black t-shirt. T-shirt. Okay. Okay. Right on. And I'll get you one of these mugs too. Yeah. That's yeah. so sweet of you. Yeah. Well, Love having you on here. Thank you so much. Yes. It was my pleasure. What a delight. We had such a great connection. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, we have the similar. We we'll love what we do. You know, when people love yeah. what they do, it shows, you yeah. know, when it just, it's just the way it is. There's no, way to, you know, you, you don't dread. You want to talk about it. Like I can see you, you yeah. light up. You want to talk right. about style. It's so yeah. great. 
Yeah, yeah. This is my soul work and I I it shows. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it yeah. really does show. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I look forward to meeting you sometime. Me too. In person. Yes. All right. Thanks, Natalia. Mm -hmm.